station. This is CNBC. Do you hear me? Hey, we have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you. Great to speak with you. Station, are we ready to proceed? We are ready. Okay, fantastic. Um, Captain Scott Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko, thank you so much for joining us. I wanted to first ask about Pluto. There's such a fascination with Pluto. What are your hopes in terms of what Pluto could do to spur interest in space exploration and future space, space missions? You know, I think this, our country, uh, you know, has a great partnership between the, uh, the unmanned or, you know, un, uh, you know, tended vehicles um, and, and human space flight. And, you know, and I think in some ways they feed off of one another and, uh, you know, encourage interest in one another. You know, if we're ever going to go to Mars, you, you know, the, all these uh, different spacecraft we've had go to Mars are definitely a, a requirement for future human visit. So I, I hope, you know, people's fascination with Pluto and the success of this mission and the difficulty in, uh, you know, going that far away for that many years is something that uh, increases interest in the space program in general. Captain Kelly, this question is for you. Budget cuts have certainly taken a toll on the funding of NASA. Uh, and in fact, uh, there has been more of a role for the private sector, for the commercial sector to play in our space program. In fact, NASA just announcing that the new astronauts who will fly in the first commercially owned and commercially operated uh, space shuttle. What do you see in terms of the role of the private sector in space in the United States? You know, I, I think our space program is, you know, a continuously evolving thing. and. Uh, you know, whereas some of these companies like Boeing and and uh, and SpaceX that'll build these first two com commercial vehicles are commercial companies. Uh, you know, likewise, uh, Rockwell that built the space shuttle was a, co a commercial company, and and we're just managing it a little bit differently. And and by doing this, um, you know, having a different uh, level of management and uh, and oversight. You know, hopefully we'll reduce costs for flying humans into low Earth orbit, which will, will uh, you know, also hopefully allow NASA to, to explore further, uh, you know, with the goal of eventually going to Mars and behind. So, you know, I, I just think it's a continuously evolving process. And, uh, you know, the commercial commercial companies have, have shown that they could possibly do something cheaper than the government, which will give us me, more resources to do more. You know, I think uh, as long as we can do this safely, I think it's a good thing. Kazanak Kornienko, do you think we'll ever see private space travel, so the average citizen going up in space? Михаил, вопрос для вас. Скажите, пожалуйста, увидим ли мы когда-нибудь космических туристов и будет ли развиваться частная космическая сфера? Но мы их уже видели космических туристов. We have already seen private space travels, and I believe for commercial companies it's a very good experience. Space exploration is constantly developing, and I believe this is one of those areas where it should keep developing, and I believe that it will happen very soon. Captain Kelly, I'm curious, uh, to the average person traveling in space and living in space is a mystery. How important are everyday uh, technologies like the iPad to you in what you do? You know, the last time I was up here, about four and a half years ago, we didn't have, have iPads. We did most of our work off of these, uh, these laptops, which are, you know, very effective, but they're not very portable. Uh, you know, something like the iPad that we have now allows us to access our procedures and other what we call operational products that we might need to complete a task in a, in a much more portable way. So I think as, as we've, uh, you know, experienced on the ground with, you know, smartphones and tablets, it provides, you know, just more portability, which means, uh, 
you know, more efficiency. We have the same thing here on, on the space station, and the iPad's great. You can look at a procedure while you're floating behind one of these, you know, large uh, science racks or, or, or something, and it, uh, it just makes us more efficient. Do you have Internet in space? What's that like compared to how it operates here in the U.S.? Well, it's uh, it's kind of like a cross between old dial-up and uh, you know what you might have now with a very high-speed internet. It's not uh, you know it's not ideal, but uh, and it and it varies from time to time and how how well it works. But it is uh, it's somewhat effective. It allows us to you know access uh, you know web pages, uh, your personal email, things like that. It doesn't provide you with the speed, like for instance, you couldn't watch a movie on it, um, but you can, uh, you know, you can post things on social media, not videos, but pictures pretty effectively. So it's a pretty handy uh, capability we have. Are you guys tweeting from space? I mean, what are the, some of the other things um, that you're doing using the internet from space? Let's see. Well, I use it for a bunch of things, um, certainly email, uh, social media type stuff with, uh, you know, Twitter. I put things on Twitter and Instagram and that, that kind of stuff. Um, I actually do some banking. I access my, you know, online bank accounts, believe it or not. I've bought gifts on the, uh, the Internet up here, airline tickets uh, the last time I was here for uh, family members. So... It's uh, pretty handy. So you have, you have to be patient sometimes, and you have to be uh, be flexible and, and uh, you know, access it when we have the, the comm coverage because we don't always have it. Probably about 45 to 50 minutes an hour, sometimes longer, we have uh, the capability to get on the Internet on the ground. And uh, what kind of shows do you watch uh, from the International Space Station? You know, they're great. We have uh, these uh, psychological support folks that uh, support us up here, and they send us, uh, you know, all different kinds of, of uh, television shows, whatever, you know, if we want. I was recently watching uh, Game of Thrones and Better Call Saul, but those both of those seasons ended, so I'm not really watching any kind of series. We don't have a whole lot of time to do that, but we uh, I would watch it when I'm exercising. Um, I don't really watch much television otherwise except for the news i'll have actually have live news playing most of the time uh in a couple of the modules that we can you know watch it live but uh you know tv shows just just those two and uh, some you know sporting events i was watching the british open yesterday while i was uh while i was working which was great trying to follow that but i missed the very end because we lost the satellite coverage Oh, <laughs> I won't tell you how it ends. Um, last quick question here. I don't know if you trade. Uh, we are a trading show, a stock trading show. Do you have a question for one of our traders? Um, you got a stock tip? I can't. I can't hear him. I could hear a little whispering, but I, that was the perfect setup for the uh, buy low, sell high answer. That's what I thought I was going to get. Station. This is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the CNBC portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from BBC. Okay. Station. This is Richard Hollingham for the BBC. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you so much. You're both looking very fit and very good after four months in space. Uh, I wondered how you were both finding the, the one-year mission. 
You know, so far so good. Um, you know, being up here for a year is a long time, but you know, we had both flown previously, so we sort of knew what we were getting into. Um, the space station is an amazing place. We have a uh, you know great uh, facilities and a lot of capability here. So um, you know, I think we're both, and just speaking for Misha a little bit, both both optimistic that uh, you know we got over 200 days ahead of us, but uh, those will be you know smooth sailing. Михаил, что вы думаете, когда вам полете? Вы так прекрасно выглядите. Ну, космос вообще омолаживает человека. I think that space makes you look younger. Это, конечно, шутка. It's a joke, of course, but at the same time, we are exercising twice a day, and I can only confirm what Scott has just said. We are very optimistic, and I believe that after my one-year mission, I will be even in better shape than before my mission. Since we're exercising regularly, and I hope that our mission will be very beneficial for those who will follow us, and we are very optimistic. I gather that before the mission, you both got on well with each other. Are you still friends? Absolutely, even more so now. I mean, you spend a lot of time up here together, and uh, that just builds bonds, um, you know, between us. We have some new crew members uh, coming up here, you know, Thursday morning that we, we look forward to seeing them, too. It's a, uh, you know, it's a great place, the space station, to build relationships and international partnerships. That's one of the great things about this uh, is space station is the international component to it. Michelle? We are still friends, <laughs> and we'll be friends until, <laughs> until the end. Until we're in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. Are there any particular aspects of this flight that, that differ from the usual missions? Obviously, you've got a, a lot more going on. It's a lot more about you this time and how you are performing. You know, because it's somewhat unique in regards to the, the duration, you know, more than we've done previously on the space station. I think, you know, if you compare our uh, involvement in, in the human um, subject type of experiments, Misha and I certainly have uh, more of that than I think maybe your average crew member might. So, you know, there's that as aspect of it. Uh, you know, being up here for this length of time also has you involved in more things that we do on the space station, other science experiments and, uh, and such. We'll, throughout the course of the year here, we'll have 400 different science experiments going on. So, you know, our involvement will be, you know, bigger than, let's say, someone that here is here for a, a six-month stay. But... Uh, you know, on the surface, though, you know, from a day-to-day -day perspective, our, our lives here are no different than any of the other crew members. And you're working together throughout this year. What does that show us about working together on Earth? I mean, is what you're doing in space something we can learn from? I think so. You know, this uh, space station, this neutral territory, so to speak, in a uh, very, very challenging environment gives us the opportunity to, to work on something that's, uh, you know, very important, very difficult, uh, you know, work with this international partnership. Um, and, you know, we've been doing this for over 15 years now, and it's, uh, you know, one of the great successes of the space station. We're getting great results now uh, from the science we do. Um, so, you know, there's, I think there's a lot to be learned from this uh, in, uh, in many, many different ways. And, Scott, have you learned anything from the Russians? I learn stuff from the, these guys all the time. You know, they have a lot of experience. Um, their long-duration spaceflight experience is, is more extensive than ours. Um, uh, they do a lot, some things different. You know, they're, they're more practical. They, uh, you know, certainly their budget is less than, than what NASA has, so uh, it's, it's great to see what they, they can achieve with uh, li more limited resources than we have.
it's uh, quite impressive. And Michelle, have you learned anything from working with the Americans? Михаил, а чему вы научились во время работы с американскими астронавтами? Ну, должен сказать, что тут есть чему поучиться. I have to say that there is a lot to learn from Americans. First of all, they're very specific, they're very thorough, especially in performing their tasks and objectives. And I believe there is still a lot to learn from our partners, and we are learning from each other every day. For example, I'm performing all my activities in the same efficient manner, in a very precise and accurate manner. And I believe this is very important here in space. They are very friendly, and I cannot say that I was angry or gloomy earlier, but our American friends are very friendly, so we're learning that from them as well. So, in brief, I can say that, yes, we have to learn from each other. Well, that's, that's good to hear. I have um, some questions from BBC Future readers, and I have one here from Liam Mantel, who asks, has your space flight altered in any way your view of humanity's role on our planet Earth? Well, you know, every time I fly in space, I'm, I'm struck uh, by... Uh, how small it makes the Earth appear and how it makes us seem like we're all uh, citizens of one place, not any particular countries. You know, you, you don't see a lot of the, you know, you don't see political borders that are drawn on maps. You see physical borders only. So it really gives you the sense that we're all, you know, big, one big part of one big team, Team Earth. And, uh, you know, the other thing you notice is the atmosphere is very, uh, very thin looks very fragile so uh, you know for me that's th those are the two main things that uh, you know I find uh, over m the course of my career here how my perspective has changed and I, I wondered um, whether your training has fully prepared you for, for what you've encountered so far and that's a question from uh, Catherine Thurwell another BBC future reader Yeah, absolutely. We have a great team on the ground, international team, not only in the U.S., but uh, in Russia, Japan, in Europe, uh, Canada, that train us for many years for these missions. So, um, you know, although there's, you know, a few things you don't uh, really realize uh, until you get up here and you can't really simulate well the, the uh, microgravity environment on Earth, um, you know, by and large, we are very well trained and... Uh, you know, and that's the uh, because of the great people we have preparing us on the ground. Does it change your dreams at all when you when you sleep above the earth? I had an interesting dream last night uh, that I remember, but I'm not going to share that with you. Uh, <laughs> in any case, I was. In any case, I was asked. Uh, after my last flight, hey, do you dream whether you're on Earth or you're in space? And I actually couldn't remember, so now I write my dreams down. And uh, most of the time they're about being on Earth, but a lot of times they're about being on this, you know, sometimes they're about being on the space station too. So it's, uh, you know, like a lot of people's dreams, they're pretty weird. I've been asked to uh, ask you to just demonstrate some uh, weightlessness. We've seen you pass the microphone backwards and forwards, and you're both floating around. But uh, just give us a quick demonstration to finish. We're like, we're like circus performers. Thank you both very much for your time, and good luck with the rest of your mission. Hey, thank you. Our pleasure. Enjoyed talking with you today. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event.